Hi there. Here we have the Multi Presence Sensor FP300 from Akara. Akara have kindly let me test this device out and let me tell you it is absolutely amazing. As you can see there is the front of the box and if we look on top of the box you can see that it's matter compatible meaning that it works with a wide variety of smart homes. The sensor is Zigbee and Thread compatible, so it comes pre-installed with the Zigbee protocol, but you can change it to the Thread protocol to work with Matter, and hopefully you've seen all the sides of the box, but that's not what you want to see. You want to see the present sensor itself. So, if we have a look on here, you have a uh, light that can flash blue, um, depending on the state of the device, and you'll get to see that when I am setting it up later. You have a reset and um, link confirmation button. Underneath you have a little thing here that you can pull and twist and pull out to remove the two CR32 batteries, which last roughly two years before you need to replace them, depending on your use case. So if you put all the uh, sensors up to maximum, obviously this may go down a little bit. If you turn some of the sensors off within the unit, then the time may go up a little bit. You have an option to screw it directly to the wall by removing this screw and the plate, putting a screw directly into your wall and then placing the sensor back onto it. Or, as with the one behind me that you can see on the wall up here, somewhere there, uh, uh, apparently my video is reversed, but uh, the one on the wall behind me is on a metal plate from an old FP32, uh, FP2 sensor. I do apologise, I'm stumbling over my words, I haven't been too bad with my ticks today, however, um, I have had one or two, so please bear with me. Now, this has PIR, it has millimetre wave, detection you can use these in combination with each other or you can separate it and use only the PIR or only the millimeter wave um, detection. It also has light, temperature and humidity sensors within the device. This means that you can use it for a wide range of automations throughout the home. For example um, on sunrise open the uh, blinds and on sunset close the blinds if you want to set up that you can buy an E1 roller shade uh, driver and it's relatively easy to set up. You can see uh, a video on the roller shade driver on my YouTube channel. I can link that down in the description below. I'll also be linking where you can buy this device. So it will shortly be available I believe on the 12th of November and you'll be able to get it at uh, the Akara official shop. You can get it if you're in the UK from EasyGates. I'll put a link to them. You can also get it on Amazon when it's available. Now, currently I've set it to detect absence for about 15 seconds, I believe. Um, so if I get this set up about there, hopefully you can see the door open and close and you can see the light going on and off. And hopefully you can still hear me when I go out of the room. So we shall go out here and we'll wait about 15 seconds. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. There we go. So it uh, has turned off. What I'm going to do now is walk back into the room in three, two, one. As you can see, it is rather quick at picking up the motion of me coming in the room. This is using uh, both protocols together, the PIR and the millimeter wave. So I'll put you back over here. So please do excuse the editing um, because the screen's going to go uh, <laughs> in on itself a little bit while I show you a screen recording and I will be back with you after I have talked you through some of the settings. So hopefully you can hear me okay because I'm using the iPhone microphone on the screen recording but what we're going to do is open the Akara app and after removing the tab that separates the battery 
you can see it pops up immediately with the multi-present sensor. So we're going to click on here. Now, as you can see, the current protocol is Zigbee. If you want to switch it to thread, you can click on thread here and you will click next. It will ask you if you want to, if you're sure that you want to swap over to thread and then click next again and it'll download some new firmware onto the device. But for this situation, we're going to thread it set it up in uh, Zigbee so that you can see uh, the full range of settings that you get. So we're going to click next and we're going to connect it to a hub which is downstairs. I'm going to connect it to the M3. So we'll click on the M3. It says please add accessory on the hub downstairs and in a couple of seconds it's just said accessory added successfully. Now, because I've added it before, it's brought the names back up and where it's going to be. However, you may want to uh, change this location um, if the hub is somewhere else in the house. But I'm going to leave it like that and we're going to give permission to my partner. So we're going to click next. As you can see, it has a, a sensor there go on to the next card you have a temperature sensor next card you have a humidity sensor next card you have a light sensor so we're going to click done now that is the present sensor currently the room that i'm in at the moment as you can see the illumination is 441 lux so the first thing you're going to want to do is go up to the three dots at the top right and if you scroll down to where it says firmware update and click on here and check if there's an update. If there is, just click update and that will do that for you. It's always very uh, important to keep your um, devices up to date. On the lower menus, you can see that the communication protocol is Zigbee. And if you want to swap it, you can reset the device and it will tell you how to do that going forward. It's connected to the M3 hub. It can connect to a variety of the Akara hubs. And the signal strength here, even though I'm upstairs and the hub is downstairs, you can see that it's an excellent connection. Now that's passing through uh, a wooden floor and a con poured concrete wall. So the signal seems to be fairly good. So going back, we'll go through a couple of the settings. As you can see, the top one where it says presence detection options, you have infrared radar dual presence, which is recommended. However, you can click on here and as you can see you can use only the millimeter wave or only the PIR and you can pause if you need to read any of the text there. We have the sensitivity and you can set it to high, medium or low. I've generally found that between about 4 and 7 meters uh, medium is sufficient. So if you have a smaller room than about four meters, I would maybe put it to low. If you have greater than seven meters long, I would put it to high. Going on, the absence delay timer. Um, I found 10 seconds gives it, uh, between 10 and 15 seconds gives it a good balance. Um, although judging on the previous uh, delay, I think the other present sensor that I've set up, I may have done it to 20 instead of 15 by accident, but it's all personal preference. So going on, you have the indicator light, which is set to always off um, as default. So this is so that it can give the battery um, as much life as possible, which, as I've mentioned previously, is around two years with normal use. And you can turn the indicator light on if you wish. Moving on from there, we have the sensor settings. So when you go on here, as you can see, you can dial in the uh, light sensor and the temperature, temperature and humidity sensor settings. So it's remembered that I turned them off. That's probably why it was doing that. So if I turn this up to medium frequency and we shall go back, as you can see, it's displaying that it's 15.3 degrees at the moment in this little bedroom and the humidity is 58.6. We'll go back onto our three menus so that I can carry that on. And you can see the on-site configuration. So this is if you want to um, adjust the detection range, you've got AI spatial learning, or you can restart the device. Now the AI spatial learning, what you need to do is click on it 
and if I go and put this where it needs to be, there we are. So I've put that where it needs to be. It needs you to be out of the room and it also needs pets to be out of the room, as you can see. So I have done that and we will start the learning process. Please confirm that the current space is unoccupied, which it is. So I'll press confirm. And as you can see, it takes 20 seconds for the spatial learning to kick in. So now that that's complete, what it's done is it's learnt about your room, how far away the walls are and things like that. It helps with the presence and absence detection. So that's the multi-presence sensor there. What we're going to do is we're going to set one automation up um, in the Akara app and I'm also going to set up a different automation with the same sensor in the Apple Home app so that you can see um, how it works. So if we come down here and go to configure automations, I'm going to add an automation. And because I've got Automations 2 enabled, um, if you want to know how to do that, I will show you after I've set this up. But you go to When, and I'm going to do Accessories, and we're going to go with the Landing FP300 and Absence. Then I'm going to go to Then, and Accessories again, and we're going to find the landing again. So we'll go down here. So the landing light and we're going to turn off. So that means anytime there's absence on the landing, that landing light will turn off. So we'll save that. As you can see, you can rename it at the top if you wish. You can add a location, you can add your groupings, but I'm not going to do that here. So I'm just going to click done. And now whenever that is absent, uh, oh, there is absence in the landing, then that will turn the light off for me. So that can be an energy saving tip for you. To turn Automations 2 on, you can go on Profile at the bottom right, and you can scroll up a little bit and Smart Automations 2.0, and you just turn it on with the little toggle there. So what we're going to do now is go onto our Home app. Now, because the uh, hub is in the living room it will have put it in the living room so what i'm going to do is i'm going to slide across at the top and occupancy is detected so i'm going to go here and i'm going to change that and put it in the little bedroom i realize my mistake it should have gone on the landing not the little bedroom so we'll do that and close out of there and we shall now go to the landing so there we are as you can see occupancy is detected so if I walk out of the landing and there is no occupancy detected and it's at a ready state so what I'm first going to do is I'm going to go on here and I'm going to just add landing because it's always important to clearly identify your uh, sensors and things. So we're going to click tick here. And there we go. As you can see, an automation that's suggested is when occupancy is detected on the landing, turn on the landing light. But I want to do something slightly different. So I'm going to go to add automation. And when it detects occupancy, and I'm going to select time at night. Now, what I will say is Apple does do this one uh, slightly better, in my opinion, than Akara, but Akara are working um, currently on making various improvements to their automation platform. Um, so, for instance, sunrise and sunset automations uh, have already been implemented on Akara, but um, hopefully they will put at night and during the day automations like Apple do here because it is a little bit more accurate um, than using Akara and having to go through on times. So what we're going to do is we're going to click next. And we're going to go down to landing and find the landing light, which is there. We're going to click next again, and we're going to make sure that that turns on. I want it to be 100%, so 
So we'll do that and we'll click tick. So as you can see there, the one that's on now is when occupancy is detected in the landing. So it's saying control to accessories, but it's actually only controlling the light. And as you can see there, it says only at night. So that one is now turned on. And that's how you set up an automation in Apple Home for this sensor. So we'll get back to the video now. Hopefully that's given you some indication as to what you can do with the present sensor. And I'll see you in a second. So hopefully you've got a little bit of a better understanding of how all of that works. Thank you very much for watching the video and thank you for Akara for sending me through the uh, units to test. Um, it isn't a sponsored video and they are not uh, telling me how to review it. They're not telling me what to say. This is all done off my own back. Um, but I do like the Acara brand. They are very good products at a reasonable price and they just seem to work most of the time, which is very good. And they also have quite a good customer service um, for if things do go wrong. So thank you very much for watching my video today. I hope you have a wonderful day wherever you are in the world and please give us a like and subscribe if you have two seconds. Um, thank you very much for watching. Have a good day.